Day 260. The front line completely collapsed, and in some areas the Ukrainians managed to advance up to 40 kilometers in one day. What is interesting, the Ukrainians used completely different tactics to minimize their losses and maximize Russian losses. And here is how they are doing it. Traditionally, to break through the enemy's positions and push the Russians back, the Ukrainians needed to do the following. First, they would send a lot of scout groups to identify defense in the most tactically important positions. Second, they would launch more intense combat reconnaissance operations to figure out how to undermine Russian defense. Thirdly, they would launch a big attack to improve their tactical position, and after gaining the advantage, they would leverage tactical gains and try to turn it into operational success, meaning launch a full-scale attack. This was only possible as long as the Russians tried to maintain control over their positions, because this way they would deplete their reserves by sending everyone to the front, which would inevitably compromise other segments of the front line. And when the front line is breached, there is basically no one behind it to stop the advance. Now the situation has changed. The Russians spent almost a month building fallback positions and optimizing everything for retreat. So the main objective of the Russians now is not to hold positions, but slow the Ukrainians down as much as possible and abandon their positions immediately after the Ukrainians get a foothold in the region. In this case, if the Ukrainians launched a massive attack, they would advance towards the settlement and get stuck, while Russian artillery and aviation would be firing at them. And yes, this would happen under normal circumstances as well, but the difference is in the frequency. So under normal conditions, they would suffer it let's say one time, and then break through and disperse. While in this situation, they would suffer it 10 times by getting stuck in front of each fallback position. That is why today, along the entire front, the Ukrainians have been launching small and short attacks. They engaged with the Russians 2 kilometers south of Duchane, the Russians fought back for some time and then left Kachkarevka. The Ukrainians made a little push in Pietekhatki and after a short engagement, the Russians withdrew. And they continued pushing little by little along the entire front, which caused a very rapid collapse because the engagements were short and allowed for high frequency. Now you might be wondering how it maximizes Russian losses. Here is how. Simultaneously, the Ukrainians have been bringing their artillery closer and closer to the Dnipro river. Ukrainian artillery is already around 15 kilometers from Kherson, which means that it can target the main retreat route from the eastern part of the bridgehead, Antonivka. The Antonivka area is like a funnel, and Ukrainian sources reported that our artillery is attacking the areas with the highest concentration of Russian forces. There is even plenty of videos online showing just how massive is Ukrainian attack from the air. And the Ukrainians can do it relatively safely, because firstly the Russians are only moving in one direction, so it is unlikely that they will make a massive counterattack and destroy their artillery, and secondly they are firing from new positions that Russian artillery simply has no information about. Of course there is aerial reconnaissance, but in the case of Russia it takes at least 90 minutes from the position being identified to an artillery strike, which in this case means that the ground will be empty because the front line is moving so fast and Ukrainian artillery is moving with it. Right now Ukrainian artillery has an absolute advantage, because its positions are not fixed, while Russian areas of concentration of forces are fixed. And the Ukrainians are leveraging this advantage quite effectively, inflicting severe losses while simultaneously cautiously advancing and avoiding possible traps. If you are against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I am doing, consider making a purchase in the online store, UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show your support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next report.